Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining the Denver Scleroderma Education Summit brought to you by the National Scleroderma Foundation's Rocky Mountain Chapter. This session is titled Making Impactful Change Through Wellness, and there's going to be a focus on nutrition. My name is Maria DeStour, and I'm the Executive Director of the Scleroderma Foundation's Rocky Mountain Chapter. Uh, before I get start, we get started, I just wanted to give you a quick notes about the session. This education event is brought to you by UC Health, a longtime partner of the National Scleroderma Foundation's Rocky Mountain Chapter. It's located in Aurora University, and it has been designated as a Scleroderma Research Treatment Center. Their multidisciplinary programs provide comprehensive care for people living with scleroderma and provides opportunities for patients to join clinical research trials. The National Scleroderma Foundation no way endorses any clinical trials, treatments, or studies mentioned in this session because the manifestations and severity of scleroderma vary among individuals, personalized medical management is essential. Therefore, it is strongly recommended that all drugs, treatments um, be discussed with your individual doctor. This webinar is for educational purposes only. So that's the business side. And now it is my honor to introduce Heather Rose Blakeman. She is a wellness coach, certified sports nutritionist and fitness instructor in Telluride, Colorado. Uh, Heather believes in wellness in all areas of health, from our food to how we move and rest and play, in the energy transition of our body and so much more. With a focus on functional fitness and functional food, Heather works with her clients to develop healthy habits that impact lifestyles. So thank you, Heather, for joining us. My name is Heather Rose Blake. And I am the creator and founder of Heather Rose Health and Wellness. And um, she already mentioned what I do. I work with clients on, you know, just bringing functional foods and functional fitness into your home. So without the need for spending a ton of money on groceries or gym memberships and stuff, just starting where you're at with what you have. Um, making it as functional for your lifestyle as you can. And so um, just a little bit about me. She already said I'm a fitness instructor, trainer, wellness coach, um, sports nutrition specialist, and work a lot with those on weight management. Let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing, as she said, we're going to talk about food a lot. And one of the common questions I get as a nutritionist is like, so what kind of plans do you follow? And the answer is like, the way I eat and the way I coach my clients to eat doesn't have a name because we shouldn't have to give labels to the way we eat. It doesn't have to be like, a whole 30 or paleo or any specific, you know, keto, it doesn't have to be any specific eating plan. It's, it's not, there is no specific word for what we're doing other than eating real foods. And when I encourage you guys to eat real foods in order to have the most functional food in your body, in your gut, in your digestive system, we focus on what we call macros. And macros are your macronutrients. So you know that whenever you take food in, you're eating nutrients. So nutrients are made up of two categories, vitamins and minerals, right? But macronutrients are made up of three categories. In your three categories, you have your car carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. And you'll see a lot of programs out there that will tell you to go low carb or low fat or high protein when really to have the most functional body in general from your gut to your gut biome to your blood flow to your cardiovascular heart rate all of that we really need a base of these three macronutrients carbohydrates proteins and fats and how we eat these in our everyday life is what really keeps your body working. How you eat these is what determines how your body reacts, how your body absorbs, and how your body 
uses calories, okay? So as we click through these slides, you're gonna see exactly what I mean by how you pair them, how you portion them, right? So I'm gonna click right through, and this, um, this is a macros cheat sheet. So if you are confused by like, what are the various macros out there? And do some macros fall into various categories? Now, when I give you this cheat sheet, I'm not saying that these are the only foods you can eat. Like if you don't see this food, you can't have it. You by all means can eat a wide variety of food, but these are your cleanest, most pure, closest to the source food that you're gonna be able to get. So carbohydrates, for example, I'm just gonna walk you through this, the cheat sheet really quick. We're not gonna talk about every food on the list, but carbohydrates, for example, a lot of people when, when people say, oh, you need to limit your carbs or you need to cut carbs. What they really mean is you probably should eat less bread, less donuts, less bagels, less cookies, less sugar. The cleaner, more pure source of carbs, when we say as close to the real source as you can get, are gonna come from your fruits, from your vegetables, from your corn, your potatoes, your grains. These that are going to get you closer to the source, especially if it is fruits from your local markets or vegetables from your summer farmers markets. Or when I say potatoes and yam family, we're thinking sweet potatoes, right? Um, like honey is on that list. The more local you can go in your honey, the, the cleaner of the sugar you're gonna get that serves your body well. And then we're talking proteins. Protein doesn't have to come from meat. So if you don't eat animal products, then not to worry, tofu, yogurt, cheese, or cottage cheese are also on that list. But when you are thinking you're cleaner, closer to the source protein, such as meat, you're thinking game, meat, beef, chicken, poultry, stuff like that. And then your fats. Um, what I want you to think about with your fats is trying to take them in, in their whole food source. So when we say olives, or olives, sorry, I'm gonna, that's thinking ahead. When we say oils, there's olive oil and there's olives. Both are very healthy. Olives still have the fiber. The oil has been stripped of the fiber. When we have coconut versus coconut oil, your coconut is still gonna be very healthy. The coconut oil has been stripped of the fibers. Same thing with the whole plant avocado versus avocado oil, right? So you can take in healthy oils as your fats, but eating the actual foods such as the avocado, the olives, the coconut, these are gonna be some of your healthier foods. And you can see in the center of the Venn diagram, that some of your stuff that's gonna overlap will be your seeds, your nuts, um, almonds, pecans, walnuts, macadamia nuts. Those are all very healthy fats that also have protein and whatnot. So if you're looking for just a general food list of when I say just eat real foods, these are just the ingredients that can build recipes. You're gonna see some recipes later in the slideshow where we take these ingredients and we build recipes. All right, so do we need all of them? You know, certain fad diets out there will tell you, no, you don't need them. Nutritionists like myself who is really into sports and just body maintenance in general will tell you every macronutrient has a reason, has a science behind it. Your carbohydrates are your energy and your fuel source. Not just like fuel, like, oh, you have to go out and exercise five hours a day, but brain fuel. Sweet potatoes are actually a carbohydrate that'll give you more brain fuel than a bagel and cream cheese, okay? Um, some rice and beans, will give you your carbs and proteins together that will fuel you better than say an English muffin with peanut butter and jelly on it because you're gonna think um, plant sources versus like factory sources. The reasoning for your proteins are your building 
it, that should say build. I'm so sorry, build and repair. Your protein should build and repair your muscular system, not muscular system like bodybuilding and buffing up in the biceps and building big hamstrings and quads, but the build and repair to have the muscles to hold your, sho your shoulders in place, hold your ribs in place, hold your spinal column in place, the muscles you need to hold your hips in place, you know, because as women, we have to protect our skeletal structure the best we can. Side note on that, um, as we age, we do lose muscle mass and bone density every year. And so we really need to re rely on our protein to build and repair. Now, in the, um, in the autoimmune world, it is really, really uh, like very, be very cautious about choosing food proteins versus protein supplements. I do want to note that like when someone tells you you need more protein and stuff, sometimes our first thought is to go to the internet and look up protein supplements. So a tiny small note is always consult with your doctor or your dietitian and nutritionist about what protein supplements, especially with scoloderma because the, the collagen protein is already compromised a little bit. And so you have to be very careful with, with that one. You don't wanna give up proteins in general, but you do wanna get cleared on what proteins are gonna hurt versus harm the situation. So I said, to make that side note that as Maria said in the beginning, we're not uh, diagnosing or giving any prescriptions to go look for protein supplements. Um, but you do want to get some protein in your daily uh, nutrition, uh, tra uh, not necessarily tracking, but what you're taking in. And the last carbohydrate or the last um, macronutrient we're going to talk about is the fats. Um, you know, back in the, you know, before the 2000s, the low fat diets were the popular thing out there. And so um, our, our country stripped a lot of the food of its fats and replaced it with artificial ingredients, artificial sweeteners and stuff like that. And um, the low fat diet was super popular. It, building fats back into your nutrition plan is starting to come back that people are understanding, yes, we do need fats. But the way you think about it is really the base of a fat is oil. So seeds and nuts, they have oils in them. Think of peanut butter. If you ever buy the natural peanut butter, you see the oil residue at the top, right? Olives and coconut have oils in them. Avocados have oils in them because these oils are your protection, what are working on the connection in your body. Now, when I say connection, I'm talking connective tissue, right? And any of you guys who have been um, taking, taking research and all of the stuff on autoimmune and scoloderma is that you know connective tissue is something you really have to be careful with. So again, you want to really balance out the fats you take in because those will protect your connective tissue of your body and your ligaments and your tendons so that then your joints work better. Because again, this is not just nutrition to look good or nutrition for a goal weight. This is nutrition to feel good, to take care of your body, to protect some of the only ligaments and tendons and bones you're going to get. We really want to take care of them. So that is a little bit of the reason and rhyme behind the um, three macronutrients. On our next slide, um, as I mentioned, when we hear the word protein, it's common that we want to go search for protein supplements. And if you walk down the protein supplement of a grocery store, the aisle, if you walk down the protein aisle of the grocery store, it's kind of like the cereal aisle. There are all these beautiful colored bags and tubs, and there's so many supplements out there. And it's like, which one do I need? So I always like to give this list to the people who are following me, reading my blog and stuff 
I just, I, I give the generalization that this is a generalized list. It's not for any specific brand and it's not for any specific part of that type of protein. But you can take in protein from what I would like to say, I'm gonna air quote this, but say a farm, okay? Um, because a lot of people wanna think, you know, supplements, factory made proteins, but when I say farm, I mean, there's animal sources, but also plant sources, both of which have been come, have come from this earth in fairly natural ways, right? So your beef, your turkey, your chicken, salmon, tuna, eggs, those are going to be your animal products. Um, Greek yogurt, if you get the Fage 0%, you can see there is still a high protein count um, with some healthy carbs in there. Tofu and tempeh are plant-based, soy-based proteins. Um, I have Vega 1 at the bottom of the list just to show that using a protein supplement, it's okay, but it's not always going to be your greatest count of protein. So if you were reading through the macronutrient protein and just kind of like wondering like, Okay, like where can I get protein that can help my connective tissue and my muscular system? These are just some sample areas that you can get them and just cook them in ways that you enjoy, right? Food can be an enjoyment. Grill some beautiful beef and make a large turkey and stuff like things that you enjoy. And I'm going to show you recipes in just a little bit that also um, take these ingredients and build recipes. Okay, next slide then is like, okay, well, I know I need to eat carbs and I need to eat protein and I need to eat fats, but like, how much? Do I need to suddenly go out and make all of my calories protein? Do I need to make all of my calories fat? No, these are going to be generalizations. Now, I, I give that full disclaimer. These are generalizations. Um, if you want specifics, you would work with a nutrition or a nutritionist or a dietitian to help you take these percentages and put them into grams and ounces. Again, these are generalizations. This is not a prescription to what will save somebody or cure somebody, right? But in general, um, from all the calories you eat in a day, you want 40% of it to come from carbohydrates. 30% will come from protein, 30% from fats. Now, some people will read that and be like, whoa, I would never have guessed that pro carbs would be higher than the others. But let me go back to where I said earlier that you want your carbs to come from I'm going to use the word plant-based sources. Think plants. Think of what grows from the earth. So you're going to want your carbs to come from nutrient-dense, vitamin-dense sources, such as your sweet potatoes, yams, beans, lentils, quinoa, barley, healthy grains like oats, right? Not necessarily a loaf of bread or a bagel or not even necessarily rice cakes, okay? Let me talk about that one really quick because when we say we want it to be from a plant rather than a factory, like you, you could eat oatmeal or you could eat oatmeal bars. You're gonna wanna choose oatmeal because the oatmeal bars probably came from a factory with added sugars, with added ingredients. I'm going to give you another note on that in just a little bit. Um, when you think rice, you could buy rice or you could eat rice cakes. Rice cakes are definitely going to be more convenient because you don't have to cook it. But your rice is still in its original form. It hasn't been stripped of any nutrients. So you're going to want to choose the rice rather than rice cakes, right? So again, your carbs, you want to think plants, okay? And then 30% of your protein, you saw the protein list on the previous slide. And then fats, same thing. Um, yes, your creams, butter, cheese, those are all healthy fats, yes. But when possible, you still wanna think plants first. For the more anti-inflammatoryness of the body, you do wanna think plants first. So 
seeds, nuts, almonds, macadamia nuts, peanuts, pistachios, walnuts, pecans, or also plants like avocados or coconut, okay? Those are going to be your healthy fats. If percentages are a little bit confusing and you wanna just think about it meal for meal, then you would think of like, okay, how much of these can I eat at once? I know she told me rice is really healthy. So what if I wanna go to uh, one of the nearby restaurants and have a ginormous cup of rice that comes with the side on my, on my dinner order, right? In general, carbs, your serving size is gonna be a half a cup. Your protein is gonna be three quarters cups or four to six ounces. Your fats, if you're eating them in oil form because the fibers have been stripped, one teaspoon. If you're eating the actual food, a quarter cup. Let me give you an example. Um, if you wanna eat peanuts, a quarter cup. If you wanna eat peanut oil or peanut butter, a teaspoon or tablespoon is gonna be plenty, right? So there's a reason for this. Again, science, to give our bodies the opportunity to use the calories, absorb the calories, and feel the least inflammation as possible, we wanna eat only what our body can process in that time setting, right? Some very active bodies with high metabolism can process more than a half a cup of carbs at a time. Other people's bodies, the average body, anything beyond a half a cup, you might feel a little overstuffed, over bloated, and that becomes inflammation. In the world of autoimmune conditions, we're fighting inflammation every single day. So in that fight against inflammation, you wanna keep your portions in check. Same thing with proteins. Proteins are very dense. The healthier the meats you purchase, like the cleaner the meats you purchase, the more dense they are. So three quarters cup of say shredded chicken, that's gonna give you enough protein for that setting. And if you take in more protein than what your body can truly use and digest, you're then overworking your kidneys, overworking your liver, your intestines. And again, when we tax our gut, we then create inflammation in our body and it goes the same for fats. Again, these are generalizations for the average body, okay? If you have a faster metabolism, you may be able to take in more. If you have a slower metabolism, you'll really have to balance everything out to be able to burn and use and absorb the calories your body needs. Okay, I know I gave you guys the Venn diagram, but I wanted to also put this into what I call my grocery list for my clients and those who read the blogs, right? So I know the first sentence there says, you're gonna really start, I talk, you're gonna, you're gonna start to realize I talk a lot about what I call the five fingers, okay? I have an entire nutrition plan built on macros and the five fingers, okay? But the quick version of the five fingers is when you're making your grocery list, when you're shopping, when you're meal prepping, when you're cooking, you wanna think of your five fingers, right? Your five fingers are your proteins, your fats, your carbs, your fruits, your veggies. And so I give people grocery lists based on the five fingers. And here would be your list, right? It's very similar to the Venn diagram you saw just a few slides earlier, but now I put it in order of proteins, fats, carbs, and then fruits and vegetables you really can't go wrong with. But if you're a list person rather than a chart type person, this is really gonna help you. Now, I wanna just clarify though, that when I say chicken, it means chicken as close to the raw form as you can get chicken, not breaded chicken nuggets, chicken, right? And same with say, um, let's say the nut butters. You wanna go as close to the source of a clean brand of almond butter, peanut butter, not like nut butter bars, 
not like the nutty butter bars out there. I'm saying nut butters. And then same with, let's take oats, for example. I'm saying oats, not oatmeal bars. I know one of the new things out there is to buy the overnight oat cups that you can just stick in the microwave in the morning. But if you read the ingredients, there's a lot of fillers in there. Just build your own if it's in your convenience of your lifestyle. If you have the time and have the energy to build your own, I would always suggest that. However, I understand that fatigue is also um, what, we're, what we're fighting against here as well. We're fighting against fatigue and inflammation. However, I do, I strongly believe in this, that if you try these foods for three weeks, you're going to notice your energy levels coming up, your fatigue levels going down, and now you're going to be less fatigued and have more energy to build your own meals. Because if you're sitting there like, Heather, I believe you and I trust you, but I don't have enough energy to stand there and cook my own meals every day. Give me three weeks of trying it and, and it, it, it's, it's just amazing. I have so many people come back to me and just tell me like the energy, the energy, the energy. Okay, now that you know the foods, these are my most, my top three most frequently asked questions when it comes to macronutrients and how to eat these nutrients to fight fatigue and fight inflammation. So I gave you the percentages and I gave you the um, serving sizes. How do you measure them? You measure food. This is important, okay? You measure food in the form it enters your body. So if you are measuring your oatmeal or rice, as you know, when you boil oats or boil quinoa or boil rice, they grow. So if you're like, okay, a carb is a half a cup, but if I boil a half a cup of rice, it becomes three cups. Measure it in the form it enters your body. Okay. Same thing with say, if you steamed broccoli, you might only be able to fit a few pieces of broccoli into a one cup measurement, steam it, and then measure it and you, you measure it in the form it enters your body. Um, I'm not saying people have to log their foods or track their foods. But if you do, how do you log them? Uh, my favorite app for my clients to use and myself um, as a nutritionist checking their plans is my fitness pal because there is a free version you can scan the barcodes of your food you can type it in you can put the serving size in cups ounces grams teaspoon tablespoon all kinds of stuff so that is what I would suggest. And then I promise, I said in a little bit, we're gonna, I get all hyped up about these topics is we're gonna talk about the anti-inflammatory, antioxidant and aiding fatigue. I just wanted to give you guys the background education first. Um, but I get so hyped up about the topic of inflammation. Okay, so I'm gonna click through. You're gonna hear me talk for a little bit. Don't worry, there's more charts, more food stuff, right? Okay. The first words I want to give you, though, you're seeing two things here. Is you're going to tell yourself that you're going to eat to aid, okay? Because as I said, this isn't nutrition for weight loss. This isn't nutrition for vanity. Although weight loss can happen with this, but it's not nutrition to look good and, you know, vanity stuff. It's not about that. This is about eating to aid your body. I want to help you to aid your gut, aid your blood system, aid your immune system, your energy, your sleep, your hormones, your overall wellness, okay? And so taking all the macronutrients we already talked about, I love charts. I used to be a teacher. I should give that disclaimer. I used to be a teacher, so I love charts. And so I've given you guys a list of anti-inflammatory foods and antioxidant foods, and then the ones that fall into both. And again, you're going to notice these are a lot of what I would call farm-based foods. When I tell people, think of a farm, think of, is it born and raised there as an animal form? Is it growing from the ground up? Could what you're eating come from a farm? 
If your box of cereal probably isn't coming from a farm, it probably doesn't fall into anti-inflammatory foods, okay? But seeds, nuts, avocados, coconuts, rice, quinoa, these things are all growing on farms. Somebody planted that seed and grew that naturally with love and compassion. So then you're taking in nutrients and you're literally taking in the transition of energy through foods, okay? So when it comes to inflammation, these are the type of foods that you're going to be able to eat with a lot of water, you want to drink your water, and you're going to start to see the inflammation of your body decrease. And when inflammation decreases, bloating decreases and chronic pain decreases, okay? Um, in a little bit, after I'm done uh, sharing screens, I'm going to talk about bloating, inflammation, and pain in relation to scleroderma. Scleroderma. I say it wrong every time. I'm so sorry. Okay, so then I also gave you a recipe because I promised that as I gave you these ingredients, I would start to help you guys build recipes because a lot of people see the ingredients of what goes into foods or what's good for them. And they're like, that's so boring. Breakfast shakshuka, you guys, it can be as spicy as you want or not spicy as you want, but never bland. Okay. Cause all it takes, some of my favorite seasonings are paprika, cumin, chili powder, cinnamon, cayenne, um, and then recently I'm loving roasted red pepper with paprika, never boring, never bland. Okay. All right. So there's a recipe there and then more examples, um, because recipes, I love to cook. So if you do check out my blogs later, if you go into the archives, there's years of recipes. Okay. I love to cook and I love to share what I cook. Um, breakfast. If you wanted, you know, burritos, bean and egg bowls, oats and eggs, overnight oats, lunches, you can build a quinoa salad, a chicken salad with rice, beef and quinoa bowl, burrito bowls, anything that you ever put in a burrito, you can put in a bowl. And again, add some salsa and hot spice, hot spice, hot season, hot, um, hot sauce. It'll be very good. One of my favorite dinners that incorporates all of it is the spaghetti squash pad thai or cauliflower crust pizza. Again, you're taking things that we love in everyday life and building recipes that we love. I'm going to click through the next through next ones. Um, there's not a whole lot to explain other than I gave you guys a um, sample dinner, salad, and then a snack recipe that could also become a meal. So one pan salmon and veggies, because as I said, if you're fighting fatigue, who wants to do a whole lot of dishes and stuff? Put it all on one pan, bake it, cook it, enjoy it, clean the one pan, right? So this will come to you in your email. Cucumber crunch salad, because this is my favorite, not a lettuce salad, because a lot of people are like, I don't want to eat salads. I don't want to eat like a rabbit, okay? I just saw that there's a chat. Maybe I missed it. So, oh, um, so... Anyways, um, this is one of the not a lettuce salad. And then, and the thing about the not the lettuce salad is that it lasts longer than lettuce, okay? And then the last one is the Greek yogurt ranch dip um, because this can be a dressing or a dip. If you're the type of person who does want to eat um, a lot of veggies but don't like them plain, Greek yogurt is on your list of protein. So you just make your own ranch. It can be a dressing on a salad or a dip for your vegetables. Okay. And then as we know, movement, we said we were going to talk general wellness, moving, just start small. Uh, if you're not feeling like moving, like right now, if today in your everyday life, you're like, I don't even feel okay to walk outside. You know, it's okay. Again, try these for a little while and you're going to start to get more active. You're going to start to get more energy and you're going to feel like you can do five minutes a day. And after five minutes, you're going to feel like you can do 10 minutes and you're going to be able to do things like, I know we're not sitting and watching TV, but just your arms in and out, 
up and down, okay? You're gonna be able to just lift your legs. And if you wanna join me in doing it right now for just a little bit of a brain break of presentations, just out with the arms, bring them in. Out with the arms, bring them in. Up and down. I like to call this one my sunset stretch, sunrise. And if you don't get the opportunity to see the sunrise every morning, you bring your own sunrise right to your stretch right there, right? So you're able to just do these. And as you start to do everyday tasks like brushing your teeth, you can do calf raises, leg swings, stretching in the legs, arms, abdominal area, just stretching. When you do decide that walking sounds like amazing, just turn on your favorite song on your phone, you know, earphones, um, put them in your ears and walk one, one song out and one song back. Okay. All right. So um, then we keep going. I believe that's actually the last one that I had. And then it just goes right back to the beginning because I'm going to stop screen share. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit um, about some of these recipes and things that I was mentioning with the connective tissue and different ingredients in the anti-inflammatory that will help, okay? And then I can also take some of these questions. But before I stop screen share, let me just emphasize that um, I did put my contact information in here, my full name on Facebook, email, website. And then if you guys want to read more on this topic, this is the blog I wrote. When this comes to you in your email, it'll be right there and it's clickable. Uh, but if you want to just take a picture of it and just go to the website, you guys, I have years worth of blogs. So if you do want to ever see um, past blogs about inflammation and whatnot. So I'm going to stop um, these and then, yeah. Right. And thank was, you. Thank you, Heather. And I can read some of these questions to you. I think yeah, absolutely. Let's do some, some of these, of these questions, questions have been great and, and very common, right? So one question was, how do I afford a diet like this? We all know that fresh whole foods cost more than and are harder to access for some people. Do you have any suggestions for that? Um, okay, so um without giving a total sales pitch, yes. Um so uh, in my nutrition program, I actually have a video called Navigating the Grocery Store, and I talk about the five fingers that I mentioned and having a budget. Depending on what your budget is, um, a large portion of your budget is going to come from proteins. But even if you only have like, say, 12 to 15 bucks a week to spend on proteins, so if anybody wants to write these numbers down, if $12 goes to being able to uh, get good, um, get chicken and some tuna and a pack of eggs, you at least have a start on your proteins. Say you want to spend 10 bucks on your fruits and or your fruits. Um, if you're just one person, you need like maybe one to two pieces of fruit per day, which is going to equal seven to 14 a week. Well, apples and oranges are all often three for a dollar. So grab three apples, three oranges, maybe a few bananas. And then we're going to go through the five fingers and then your veggies. Say you only have like 12 bucks to spend on veggies. Grab like one pack of kale, one pack of spinach, a couple onions, a couple tomatoes. You can build a ginormous salad, right? And then the next one would be your fats. So even if you only have $4 to spend on fats, grab a pack of peanuts and a pack of cheese. So okay, you have two healthy fats right there. And what, I miss carbs. Um, carbs, if you only have $4 to spend on carbs, grab a big container of oats and a bag of rice or a couple of sweet potatoes. And you can do it in my video. I talk about how managing a grocery list for $50 for one person or a hundred for two. And then you can apply it to your family. If you're feeding a family as well, um, that budget might still sound like a high amount to some people. So if you need help spending less than 50, um, 
uh, someone like myself could help you to build one. And then as far as finding affordable, um, affordable stuff, you know, I promised I wasn't going to give a sales pitch, but if you do go to my website, um, I have a nutrition program. Uh, my programs start at $30. So, and that's for a month. So it's um, fairly affordable and whatnot. Great. Well, and then another thing, so people with scleroderma often have decreased mobility in their mouth. Uh, sometimes they have a tight mouth. Sometimes they have trouble chewing. Sometimes they don't have teeth. And sorry, I know this is a lot. Sometimes they also yeah. have something called gastroparesis where their, their GI system isn't working properly. Do you have any strategies for people like that? So a strategy like that um, would be Definitely work with someone who is either a dietitian or nutritionist like myself to take some of the foods you enjoy and making them into, I'm going to use the word, more mushy options. So taking your oats and making them more mushy, taking your apples and bananas with oats, possibly making them into an oatmeal or a smoothie, taking all your vegetables and making them into a creamy soup. You can easily make a creamy soup with um, by adding protein such as Greek yogurt and tofu with your vegetables and stuff. And then still, therefore, being able to have to take in your nutrients in liquid form, because you can take them in in liquid form. A lot of people in liquid form are going to say, oh, do a protein smoothie. But, you know, um, scleroderma, scleroderma, you, um, you, you have to be very careful with not having too much protein and stuff like that. So but you want to be able to work with not just like smoothies but also soups. Like even if you did a cold soup like gazpacho, that way you're still taking in the nutrients of cucumber, zucchini, squash, butternut squash. Um, speaking of butternut squash, I love making hummus out of that. So that's more mushy and still enjoyable, stuff like that. Awesome. Uh, people with scleroderma often suffer from acid reflux. Yep. Uh, and, and so they have to kind of stay away from the tomatoes and the peppers and the onions. Uh, do you have any uh, recipes on your website or any uh, thing, foods that people with acid reflux could focus on? Let me, so I do have a lot of recipes on my website and I also have a cookbook on the website. Um, one thing I often say to people when I'm working with them is, you're always more than welcome to eliminate the ingredients that you can't have. And if you need help substituting them, by all means, let me know, post on any of my social media um, outlets and I can respond with like ingredients that might be better. So like, say you can't have peppers, onions, and tomatoes, we would then address, can you have squash or zucchini or cucumbers or, other types of vegetables that'll still give you your micronutrients to help you still get your nutrient content there. Awesome. And then another thing that people with scleroderma suffer from is sometimes is dry mouth. Uh, do you have any strategies for overcoming dry mouth? Other, I mean, I live at 8,400 feet elevation. So I feel like uh, we deal with this every day. We, we drink a lot of water electrolytes um and we use a lot of cough drops i don't know if that it's not necessarily a nutritionist advice but that's a hard one um just taking in your most hydrated foods as you can so if you think of foods a lot of foods are dehydrated right when we buy oatmeal, rice, beans, quinoa, those are dehydrated foods that we have to give water to, you're going to want to try to eat your most hydrated foods. Think of a cucumber, it's mostly water. Watermelon is mostly water. Apples and oranges have a lot of water. So you're going to want to eat very hydrated food, but also drink so much water. Like the amount of water we need to drink as humans just on a daily basis for daily functioning, we do need to be drinking a lot of water.